Hello everybody out there in YouTube land. I am Levi Clay and I am back to talk about, well, one of the great YouTube creators of our time. Sounds very dramatic, right? But of course, everybody uh, here should be, if you are in the music scene, familiar with Adam Neely and his wonderful educational videos. Adam has just uploaded a new video where he goes through and takes a musical IQ test. Now, I thought, as soon as I saw that, I thought, wow, wouldn't it be fun to do a musical IQ test? and see where we uh, where we get results. Now, of course, Adam is going to do his musical IQ test and then talk about his, his thoughts on the validity of the test itself. So I have literally watched the first minute of Adam's video, gone no further, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take that IQ test now rather than watching his full video and then coming to the same or similar, letting his conclusions influence my thoughts on the test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this test now and then I'm going to film a second part where I talk about my thoughts on the validity of this test uh, after watching of course Adam's thoughts and I'll see what I, uh, where we agree where we disagree I think we'll probably end up largely agreeing but yeah I posted a link below to Adam's video please do go and check it out and I've posted a link to the Music Labs uh, Musical IQ test so you can take the test yourself and see what results you get so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on some headphones I'm going to bring up this IQ test and we are going to go through it we're going to we're going to do it we're going to see uh, see what the results are. So let me just make sure I'm not getting any uh, erroneous sounds coming through. Everything should be fine. 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 <laughs> so uh, experiment is being conducted by researchers at uh, Harvard University. Before you decide to participate, please read the following information. Study how the mind works. Specifically in this research, we're investigating how people make sense of music that they hear. We will play you some sounds. You can use speakers or headphones. We'll ask you questions about what you hear and the experiment takes at least 20 minutes. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get going. So, uh, have you played this game before? No. Think about how you feel when you listen to music. In general, how much do you enjoy music? I enjoy music very much. <laughs> Let's go all the way. The test is about hearing, tuning in music. For each question on this test, you'll hear two examples of music, in tune or out of tune. Your job is to choose the example where the singer is more out of tune. Okay. Is this serious? <laughs> In this out of tune music, right? Okay, fine. So let's practice here. Two examples, the same music. And one example, the single will be in tune, the other will be out of tune. So goodbye to Bolero, my sentimental friend. I don't know when I will drop the needle on you again. So goodbye to Bolero, my sentimental friend. Okay, so one's out of tune. Uh, which example was the singer more out of tune than the first? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's in tune. I mean, they were very similar. I'll go with second. Yeah, it sounded like the harmony was out of tune. Are you ready to continue? We'd like to go to the practice. Sorry, were they practice questions? No, we'll continue. <laughs> and now begin the May test. Okay, it's okay to make a guess. In fact, most people do best on this test when they don't think too hard about their answers. That obviously makes sense. Follow your intuitions. Like many men, I can be it's out of tune. First one's attitude. I could fly through the sky on the open sea. I could fly through the sky on the open sea. It's not like they've even used um, different recordings. Like 
second one should be actually hey, 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 First one. <laughs> This is just a little voiceover afterwards to let you know that for the sake of completion, I decided to keep in me completing the entire test, but I don't think that you wanted to watch all 20 minutes of it, so I've time stretched it down. Uh, and that's so you can see when I do get questions wrong. I didn't want you to think that I cheated this in any way, shape or form. I'll slow it down anytime I make any significant comments, but outside of that, moving forward, when I time stretch things, I'll just play a little bit of music for you. Okay, cool. They're both out of tune. <laughs> Okay, go a second. You say, oh, what if she loves you? She might be thinking of you once you around anyway. You can hear the artifacts in that. You say, oh, what if she loves you? She might be thinking of you once you around anyway. Now I'm paying more attention to the clear auto-tune artifacts that you can hear in that one. Yeah. Uh, they're very close. Let me go first. Okay. Test is about hearing melodies and music for each question. On this test, you hear the same tune three times. Each time the tune will be in a different key. Okay. This is like singing a song in a higher or lower voice. Right. Okay. So this is clearly made for non musicians. Uh, one of these tunes would be the odd one out. Its notes would have changed. Okay. All right. Okay. Da 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 da. Ma, ma da da. That's our mistake. Ma, ma da da. Uh, that one actually sounded incorrect. Uh, hearing the beat in music, the two examples of music, each example will have a beep track playing along with the music. Some examples of the beats will not be on the beat, and others, uh, sorry, will be on the beat and they'll be not on the beat. Job would tell us the example has the beeps that are most on the beat. Sometimes it'd be very hard to tell. Okay. It's a bit late.
So after all of that, what we can uh, what you can tell me is that my musical IQ is 120. 120. Estimate your score the same way as real IQ test, dude. Really? Is that true? Real IQ tests are done on 45 questions. Okay. Uh, all based on other people who have taken the test. 100 is the average score. Uh, normal distribution, standard deviation of 15. Most people, 68%, score between 85 and uh, 115. And nearly everybody, 95% of people, score between uh, 70 and 130. New tests uh, will change. Cool. More detailed scores on the three subtests that you use. So my my melodic discrimination is very high, and evidently my uh, tuning perception is a little bit low. And um, yeah, okay. So you think performance of tests like this uh, might accurately predict people's ability to play uh, to play musical instrument or sing? I disagree. I don't. I don't think for a second that. Uh, performance in a test like this might predict people's ability to play. I mean, sure, I, I can, I can play. But I think the reason, I think the reason I did okay in this test is because I can play. So, um, right there, we have it. That's me doing the test. My IQ was uh, 120. What I'm going to go do now um, is I'm going to listen to Adam. I'm going to watch Adam do the test. See what happens with Adam. See what Adam's thoughts are on the test. My thoughts are relatively simple. Um, the first one, the tuning perception thing. Uh, I think that testing tuning perception is a difficult thing to do because you operate either within a 12-tone system or you're operating slightly out of that, microtonally out of that, if you like. And over, I can't, it might have been maybe 15 questions, but 15 questions probably just isn't enough to really give you an idea of um, of how accurate someone is with that. I feel you need to do 100 questions. And it's difficult because, to be honest, towards the end of that, I'm not going to say my ears were getting tired, but I was losing focus. I was listening for other things and I was thinking what I was thinking about the test as a whole. So it's very difficult on how you would go about doing that over a prolonged period of time uh, and get accurate results. Uh, so that was okay. The melodic discrimination, which one was that? Oh, that was, um, okay, that was hearing one phrase and then hearing another and seeing if you could hear the differences between that. Were, obviously, they were a lot easier because it was um, isolated piano. I think the test was very, very bad, though. Uh, and the reason I say that is because it presented you with option one, then option two, and then option three. Well, if option one was wrong, then you didn't know that until you'd heard both option two and three. And I guess it's hard to hear a third option and remember the first option. I feel that the best way to test that melodic discrimination may have been to give you the melody and then to give you th three the melody played in three other keys and for you to discern which one was incorrect. So that way you know what you're measuring against. Because as I say, if the first one is correct, you hear the second one, you compare it to the first one. If the first one and the second one are different, then when the third one comes around, you're having to compare it to two previous melodies to decide which one it was the same as so i don't think that was probably the best way to do that uh, beat alignment was uh i'm okay with that beat alignment thing so um right let's go and listen to adam and see what adam says and i will be back anyway our estimate of your musical iq is 118 okay so first up yes i'm smarter than adam neely all right cool uh, no, of course, that's a ridiculous notion. I think that highlights the issue with this test as a whole, right? Uh, there might only be two IQ points in it, but you can't possibly be taking an IQ test like this seriously. As I said in my comment, when it's reduced to as little as 45 questions, you're just not getting enough detail from from the participants, and especially when you're comparing like myself to Adam Neely. Adam Neely's ear is so much better tuned to pitch in music like I know that sounds crazy as I'm a, a transcriber my skill is really in rhythm uh, and Adam's just a master of, of pitch so uh, absolutely ridiculous to, to put me two points higher than than Adam uh, and I think actually that highlights another interesting aspect of this like musical perception they gave us the beat measurement and and how in time something was and i've got thoughts on that i'll talk about that in a second um but there was no rhythm recognition and as i say i think that that's where my skills as a musician are strongest right i am a transcriber and the skill in that for me is listening to something and then accurately uh, perceiving where that thing existed in relation to a beat so comparing two things in relation to a beat rather than comparing two beats in relation to a static piece um, seems like a, a misstep. It seems like that's the kind of thing that you absolutely would want to check for, right? You play two melodies on the piano and have them be very similar, but one one note is a sixteenth note early or a thirty second note early or whatever. 
that seems like a good test that could be added into this to immediately give you a much broader uh, pool of results to draw from, much uh, a much broader uh, pool of things that you can grade people on. Again, 45 questions is uh, is a bit silly. Uh, and regarding the beat, you know, uh, Adam Mason makes some very interesting points on that. And I agree with him because he's talking about the notion of it all being very Eurocentric and Western-centric. And yeah, like the concept of the beat, you, you know, when I was, when I first went to music school, I had this very arrogant, um, closed-minded opinion on the subject of the beat and playing in time because I grew up listening to very technical, progressive rock and metal, right? So to me, it was about being on the grid, Okay, you were either in time or you were not. And that was something that you could objectively measure. Now, of course, that is something that we can objectively measure, whether or not something is or is not in time. But what I had to eat the humble pie on, if you like, is over time I started to understand that while you can objectively measure if something is or is or is not in time, objectively in time, that isn't actually a measurement on whether something is or is not good. You know, I can listen to very technical, progressive stuff that's very rigidly in time. I grew up listening to a lot of Ron Jarzombek. I love his music. I still love his music to this day. He's very metronomically precise. That's the point of the music. And then you can compare that to, say, Tower of Power. And you listen to the way Dave Garibaldi plays drums. Like, his sense of time, his sense of where the pulse is, shifts. He pushes and pulls with playing on the beat and sitting behind the beat a little bit. And this was like musical nuance that I just totally didn't understand and appreciate when I was uh, first going to music school. It's taken me a lot more life experience to really sort of understand that. Uh, Adam talks about, you know, Afro-Cuban music. If you were going to be listening to some Afro-Cuban music, again, your perception of where the beat is, your perception of where you should fall in relation to that beat changes ever so slightly. So I'm not crazy on the way that they went about testing that, but that is what they, they have done. So uh, yeah, have you... Uh, have you participated in this test? Let me know your scores below. I would be interested to know how you got on and what your thoughts are on the test as a whole. Um, as usual, I am going to say a huge thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. Apparently that didn't work. Let's do that. <laughs> supporters over on Patreon. Thanks very much for your kindness, generosity and support. You guys allow me to take time out of transcribing. I'm supposed to be transcribing some... Uh, what am I transcribing at the moment? Oh, Philip Sace. Yeah, some uh, crazy blues Philip Sace stuff, and that's a lot of fun, but making a video like this is also fun. So thank you for supporting my channel. Um, it is a huge support. And you can uh, also check me out on Amazon. Have a look for one of my books. Look for Levi Clay. I've written a lot of books, and maybe um, maybe working on those will help your ear, help your, your musical IQ be higher than Adam Neely's. Again, ridiculous notion. <laughs> uh, and you can also now check me out by checking the join button. There's a join button just below my video. That's a way to become one of my YouTube VIP supporters which is another great way to support the channel. Anyway, thank you so much for the kindness and support, guys. It really does mean a lot. You can check me out on Patreon by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here, and you'll see two more videos here and here. Of course, one will be Adam's video, so I recommend you go and check that out. Let him know I sent you. Send him my love, and I will see you guys for another video soon. Goodbye.